G'day and welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics where it is easier than you think. And we're currently working our way through Jim Caronis' list of 100 integrals. This is number 32 in the list and a curious little integral it is. We have a fraction. Uh, the numerator of course is not the derivative of the denominator so we don't have any logarithmic structure here. But what we do have is a sum of squares in the denominator which would suggest an inverse tan function. I hope you can recognise that. Although the second thing is not x squared, but it's a function of x squared, so it's a complicated a little bit. But thinking of tangents raises another thing, another matter. You might recall if you've been watching this video series that a few integrals ago, I think it was integral number 27 or 28, we found the integral of tan cubed x and I spoke then about a lovely little property that the tan tangent of x has that is the derivative of tan x is 6 squared x but also tangent is connected to 6 squared x with, through an identity as well so there's a connection on two levels and cos squared x is very closely connected with 6 squared x so we're going to find our way ahead like that. How do we get sec squared x out of cosine squared? We divide numerator and denominator by cos squared x. I hope my explanations made sense to you. Uh, I'm going to put in the step to make it clear. We divide the 1 by cos squared x, divide this by cos squared x, and divide the cos squared x by cos squared x. And what does that give us? The reciprocal ratio for cos x is six, sec x, so this is going to be 6 squared x. This is going to be 6 squared x. And this is going to be 1. Now already, this part of the pattern looks like the derivative of tan x. Can we change this into some expression with tan x? And the answer is yes, we can. And we use our identity. So the top part is going to be our integral, and the bottom part we're going to use the identity. Have a look at it. 1 plus tan squared x is 6 squared x. That's our identity. And we're going to replace this 6 squared x here with the 1 plus tan squared x. So I'll write the tan squared x first, and we're going to get tan squared x plus 1 plus another 1, so there'll be plus 2 here. And now we're going to make our substitution, because we have a tangent function here and its derivative here. So, well not the derivative of this function, but the derivative of the tangent. So here we go. We let, let's say u equal tan x. And we find the derivative, which is 6 squared x. Multiplying both sides by dx, we get that. And as you can see, this expression here is exactly, exactly what we have here. 6 squared x dx, 6 squared x dx. So, substituting, I can get du, I'll just put a 1 in there, and on the bottom, because tan x is equal to u, then tan squared x will be u squared. There we go. Now this makes the sum of squares quite explicit. 2, of course, is a square, but it's not a square of anything pretty. I'm going to write it in so it is very explicit. 2 is root 2 squared. So we have u squared plus root 2 squared. This is a pattern for an inverse tan function. I'm going to complete the pattern. We would have a root 2 on top and a 1 on root 2 out the front to compensate for it. And now we're integrating a over u squared plus a squared. And that is very definitely our inverse tan function. So we have 1 on root 2, inverse tan, 
By the way, in the United States, I know you use Arctan. Uh, in some ways, it's very sensible. But in deference to my colleagues and students in Australia, I'm going to use the notation we use here. Uh, so please forgive me for that. Just understand that this is the same as your Arctan. So it's the inverse tan of U on root 2 plus C. Now, I'm not confident that I've got room at the bottom of the board to write the answer, but we just need to substitute back. And U is worth tan X. So I'm just going to write it across here. It's 1 on root 2. Inverse tan of u, which is tan x, on root 2 plus c. And there's our solution. It only took 2, 4, 6 steps, but it did require that we, we recognise the sum of squares here, and also that we recognise that the reciprocal of cosine squared was secant squared, and that gave us a way ahead for converting to this and using the tangent substitution. A little ingenious, but a lovely little integral nonetheless, even if the answer is not exciting. But still, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. And I thank you for watching.